Um, so today I'm going to talk about the blockchain trilemma. So uh, the trilemma, which I'm sure most people know, is the following. The three important properties of the blockchain, decentralization, security, and scalability. And the blockchain trilemma states that only two out of three properties can be simultaneously achieved. In other words, one cannot build a blockchain that has all three properties. And so this has been the open problem in the field uh, for quite a few years now, which is, does there exist a system which have all three properties? Okay. Now, the blockchain trilemma is mentioned by a lot of people, but it seems that different people have different interpretation of what it is. Since we want to make progress on this trilemma, we will need to have a better understanding of what exactly is the statement that we try to prove or disprove. So I went back and tried to figure out where this trilemma comes from, and I find three uh, blog posts uh, on Wiki which explains these three trilemma. They all emerged around the same time within a few months of each other in 2016. And uh, the one here on the Ethereum wiki attributed to Vitalik has the most precise statement, so let's go with that. So the trilemma claims that blockchain systems can only have at most two of the three properties. One, decentralization. Decentralization means each node only has limited resource, small amount of resource, order C, but we can also think of order one, fixed amount of resource. Two, and the resource may be storage, computation, or communication. Number two, scalability. That is, the whole system, on the other hand, can process throughput that scales linearly with N, the number of nodes in the network. Three, the security is secure against attacker with up to order N resource. So in other words, the security is at the level of the whole system. Okay, so those are the three properties. Now, let's be a bit clear what it is not. So it is not only about big TPS. If you have big transactions per second, it doesn't mean that you have solved the trilemma because trilemma is really about how the system scale with the number of nodes. Uh, some people think is about proof of stake versus proof of work. And if you look at the statement of the trilemma, it says nothing about proof of stake or proof of work. So in other words, this trilemma is something totally different from that issue, okay? So let's now focus on this problem. All right, so I go to literature and I say, okay, if there's a trilemma, it seems like a mathematical statement, there should be a proof of this statement somewhere. And I find this proof. So this is the beginning of the proof of this trilemma. Um, and unfortunately, as I read on, it says the following. Um, OK, so to be finished. It's not finished yet. So there's no proof, OK? All right, so now there's no proof. But there's a, we'll call it conjecture. And so our progress that I want to report today is that we've resolved the trilemma. So we have shown that the trilemma is actually false. And we will propose a, uh, and explain a new protocol, what we call trifecta, which uh, satisfies all three properties. Trifecta is a short name for three times perfect. OK. All right. And uh, trifecta is also the name of our new project, blockchain project that we just started based on this technology I'm talking about today. OK. All right, so here's how we solved the problem, okay? So a year ago, we put a paper out on Archive uh, on a new protocol called PRISM, okay? And PRISM achieves what we call scaling to physical limits, okay? This paper will appear in the ACM Security Conference in London in within a month from now, in November. OK? What, at that point, we're trying to achieve the so-called vertical scaling, which I'll explain a bit later. What we observed more recently 
is that a new protocol can be designed based on PRISM together with ideas from sharding. Together, we can achieve horizontal scaling, okay? And this is a paper currently under review, okay? So let's clarify this scaling issue. So basically, there are two types of scaling, and this is also one source of confusion of the trilemma. Scaling, what does it mean? Is it scaling vertical or is it horizontal? So here's a picture. You have a blockchain network here. By vertical scaling, what do I mean? I mean that, okay, suppose you have a faster computer, three times faster. Can you improve the speed of the, of the blockchain three times? That's vertical scalability. So in other words, we have a certain fixed amount of resource in the network, okay? Fixed amount of compute, fixed amount of storage, fixed amount of bandwidth, and fixed amount of network delay. So these imposes physical limits to the network. And the question of vertical scaling is whether one can scale performance up to these limits. Horizontal scaling, on the other hand, is different. Horizontal scaling says that you start from a network and suppose more nodes participate in the network. You have more people participate in the network. Question, can you scale the performance of the network as the network, scale the performance as the network grows for a fixed amount of resources per node? Okay, now quiz time. Is the trilemma about horizontal or is it about vertical scaling? How many people think vertical? How many people think horizontal? Yes. So trilemma, as stated very clearly in the wiki, Ethereum wiki, is about horizontal scaling. In other words, fixed amount of resources and scale the network. Okay? So trifecta, which we'll talk about, solves the horizontal scaling problem. Prism, which we published last year, solves the vertical problem. What is interesting is that it turns out that the architecture of PRISM that solves vertical scaling, combining with the idea of sharding, will give us a solution trifecta, okay? Which I'm gonna explain now. Okay, all right. Before I explain our protocol, okay, let us situate our protocol and understand why the trilemma is not a trivial problem. So to understand that, let's look at two extremes. So now we focus on horizontal scaling so in the one extreme of horizontal scaling, we have full replication. In other words, we are repeating, we are duplicating this blockchain across many nodes. So every node maintains the entire blockchain, okay, full replication. In this case, the security is great because the whole network is repeated. Very high security, security of the order of the size of the network. You need power as big as say half the size of the network in order to attack it. On the other hand, the scalability sucks, horizontal scalability sucks, because the throughput cannot increase with the number of nodes because everybody's doing exactly the same thing. On the other extreme is instead of having a single blockchain, let's have many independent blockchains. So in this example, free blockchain. So these blockchains are isolated and controlled by different subset of nodes, completely isolated. So in this case, the security is bad because each blockchain can be attacked separately and therefore the security is weak because if there are many blockchains and each are small, number of nodes, then you can easily attack each one of them. So the security is bad. But the throughput is good because all of these guys are working in parallel processing the transaction. So you have high aggregate throughput. So throughput is good. So the blockchain trilemma can be restated as designing a sharded system which simultaneously achieves scalability and security. And uh, the question is whether such a protocol exists, okay? All right, so now is the problem clear? Okay, so I've defined the problem, and now I will explain the protocol. Okay, so I'll use some visualization to explain the protocol. Okay. All right, so to explain the protocol, let's first start with the most basic blockchain protocol, which is the longest chain protocol, okay? 
So here you go. You have a bunch of miners adding blocks to our blockchain, following the longest chain protocol. And this blockchain is doing two things. One, it is inserting transactions into the blockchain. Each block contains many transactions. It is also doing another thing, which is blocks are voting for previous blocks. So implicitly in blockchain, in the longest chain protocol, you have to, a block has to be six block deep or 10 block deep or 20 block deep in order to be confirmed. So in other words, blocks are voting for previous block, okay? So the throughput, as we know, the throughput of longest chain protocol like Bitcoin is very terrible. Seven transactions per second or 12 transactions per second, recent improvements, but still very low. The latency is also very poor of the order of hours. You have to wait for confirmation. Six block deep, 60 minutes, very long. And so when we thought about the prism problem, we figured out how to simultaneously improve the latency as well as the throughput. And the key idea there is through a decoupling process. So let's first talk about latency. What we realize is that if we want to improve the latency or the throughput, okay, one way of doing it is to improve the mining rate, the rate at which blocks are generated. This is a very naive approach, and it doesn't work. And the reason is because of this messy picture. Once you increase the block generation rate, in other words, many, many blocks per second, it looks like your throughput is good. And latency is good because everything is very fast. But because of the distributed nature, the decentralized nature, you have a lot of forking and forking reduces security, so there's no good. So there's a bad solution. So when we designed PRISM, what we came up with was a totally different set of ideas. Again, starting with the longest chain protocol, but now, instead of adding a lot of blocks to this one blockchain, we generate blocks of different types, focusing on specific functionality of the blockchain. So in this example, the blue blocks are blocks that are ho whose only role is to vote for the green blocks, which are where the transactions are proposed. Okay? So the blue blocks are what we call voting chains, and their only job is to vote for the green block. And now our voting rate is very high, so we have many, many votes, and the green blocks are getting confirmed extremely fast. As opposed to previously, you're waiting for blocks to grow very slowly. And now because of this thing, you're growing very fast. Okay? So one, so now we get a very fast confirmation. The second step we ask is how do we get high throughput? Because this doesn't really improve the throughput because the green blocks are still very slow. And the reason why the green block is very slow is because, again, we want to prevent forking. Forking is bad, so we have to add green blocks very slowly. But as a result, the throughput is very low. So what we did here is to apply this decoupling principle a second time. In this case, we decouple the transactions. So instead of having transactions in the green blocks, we generate a third type of blocks, which we call transaction blocks, okay? And these transaction blocks are a third type, and their only job is to carry transactions. So that's the load of the system. And now the green blocks, only role is to propose transactions. They don't directly carry transactions. What they do is they contain pointers to whatever transactions block that is available right now and then rope these transaction blocks and create a ledger, okay? All right, so if you look at this protocol, what do we see here, okay? We see that the picture decomposes into two sides. On the left side, the voting chain is to maintain the security of the system, okay? The job is to vote for the green block to confirm the green block, which implicitly confirms the transactions. And the left-hand side is responsible for carrying transactions. 
And because now the transactions are outside the green structure, we can increase the transaction block rate very high in order to get high scalability. And we can get vertical scalability here because now we can push it up, okay, until it's very high, until it hits the physical limits of compute, storage, or communication. And this is PRISM, the solution to the vertical scalability problem. And we solve it by decoupling security from scalability. Yeah. So the, the security is by redundant validation, but the computation is now happening not in the green boxes, That's right. but on the white boxes to the left. So what is it that the validators are validating, and how do you know that the computations in the boxes on the left are valid computations? So the, okay. So the, exactly, very good point. So here, the validation problem is decoupled from the cons consensus problem. So the green blocks and the purple blocks together is responsible for ordering. So the blocks themselves may not be valid. It's not the responsibility of the security structure. However, whoever interpret the block can check for validity, whoever wants to interpret it. So that's how this thing is decomposed, okay? I still have quite a bit of things to cover, so I'll just go on. Okay, all right, so that's a good question. So the key word mentioned there was redundant. So in other words, the very important observation is that the purple structure, the security structure, is maintained by everybody. Maintained by everybody in the network, very important. Because this is security. Everyone has to maintain it. Luckily, these purple blocks are very small because they only contain pointers. They're very small. So although it looks like a very large footprint, it's actually very small size. Most of the load is on the left-hand side, which are the transaction blocks. That's where the data is. That's where the logic is. Everything's there, okay? So that's, that's a lot. Okay, all right, so this is PRISM, and this is what we are presenting at CCS. Okay, now we made a key observation, is that although this architecture is aimed to design for vertical scalability. By some modification, we can get horizontal scalability as well. Okay, so what is the modification? So now, suppose I increase the number of nodes in the network. Okay? Now if I increase the number of nodes in the network, the question is, can I still generate more transaction blocks, even more transaction blocks? So what, I want to scale the network horizontally now. At this point, each individual node cannot process all the blocks. So what we do is we basically shard the blocks, the transaction blocks, into different colors. Each color corresponds to one shard. And in this example, there are six shards, this example, and six colors. And you can see now there are six independent ledger being maintained by the whole system. And each shard is only maintained by a subset of nodes, okay? And only those shards is responsible for validating and processing the blocks in its own shard, okay? So this is an important point, is that now the workload is no longer scaling per node. We are scaling the total amount of work by increasing the number of nodes working. And the more nodes you have, the more shards you can have the more parallel processing you have, and that is the essence of horizontal scalability. Okay? All right. So that is the protocol. Okay? All right. Now, um, we built a prototype around this idea in Rust, about 20,000 lines of code. Okay? And what you see here is, actually, what it's supposed to see here. Let me start again. It's not very good to tell people what you're seeing here when the thing is dead. That's a bit worrying, because I thought maybe the, 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 this is a live demo, so I don't want a live demo to die. But actually, it's just, okay? All right. So this is the same protocol, but now running live. 
It is now running on 100 EC2 instances. We just started the instance about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. OK. And this is running live. And uh, here's a network, 100 nodes that we're running on. And it says no data. Sorry? Bad internet. OK, this is a bad internet. So, OK, good. It's coming again. So we're having internet problem all morning long. So we can design very good blockchain system, but we couldn't get Wi-Fi properly. OK, so maybe we should go back to the basics here. All right? OK, good. All right. So we are getting the kind of throughput we're getting in this system. So this system is six, shot, six shots over 100 EC2 instances. We're getting throughput of the order of 200K transactions per second overall. OK? Confirmation delay of the order of 30 something seconds and very low forking weight. And these 200,000 transactions per second is split across six different nodes. OK? So red means uh, right now we have some communication problem, I guess. But it's running. It's running on those EC2 instances, OK? All right, so we have six instance, six shards, each shard processing about 35,000, 37,000 transactions per second. OK? All right. Now, of course, you can have more shards even, and lowering the transaction rate per shot to get the same total through, but that's fine. This particular example is just six shards. OK? All right. So there's a demo. All right, so let's go back to the talk, the PowerPoint. OK? All right. OK. So here are the two extremes again. So let's go back to this two extreme. So now we have a prototype. We actually have results. So I'm going to show you some results of the trifecta by even scaling to more shots. So the example we had earlier was six shots. Let's see what happens if we go to more shots. So here we have, we're plotting three things according to the trilemma. This is resource per node. This is total throughput. And this is number of tolerable adversarial nodes. For three different systems, we're going to plot these three things. These are just baseline. For, full, for both all three cases, we'll be fixing the amount of resource we use per node. Here, the resource is memory and compute. OK? So we're fixing the amount of resource. As you can see, in the full replication system, the total throughput doesn't really scale with the number of nodes. So this experiment is consistent with what we're thinking. On the other hand, the security improves, so the number of adversarial nodes you can tolerate increases linearly with the number of nodes in the network. OK? On the other hand, independent blockchain, the throughput increases, but the security doesn't increase. OK? So we have horizontal scalability, no good. Security, good. But the reverse in independent blockchain. So for trifecta, we ran an experiment with 200, up to 200 nodes. We calculate the resource each node uses in terms of memory and compute, in terms of cores. Okay, And you can see here that the resource per node is not exactly fixed. So this shows that this is an experiment, not something I fake generate. Because as you increase the number of nodes from 0 to 200, there is some increase of a little bit overhead. However, the increase is no more than a factor of 2 over 200 nodes. On the other hand, the throughput is increasing from very small to 100k over 100 nodes. And the security, which we can calculate based on the forking of our system, is also increasing roughly linearly. OK? So this picture shows that empirically, we solved the trilemma. Why? We have used more or less order one amount of resource per node. But throughput is increasing order n. And security is also increasing order n. OK? Now, together with the empirical observation, we also have an accompany theorems. So actually, we were able to prove theorems. 
we didn't have to quit, you know, just keep on going. And we proved them. And uh, our formulation is we fixed a certain amount of resource per node, order one computing storage and communication resources. We proved the following theorem, trifactor achieves order and throughput. And for a fully adaptive adversary, okay, fully adaptive adversary, with a power which is less than half the network, as long as less than half the network, trifactor achieves consistency in liveness. This beta less than 0.5 is exactly the same guarantee as longest chain in Bitcoin. Okay, so we maintain the same security of Bitcoin, but we get the scaling of throughput with fixed amount of resource. Okay, so uh, I have uh, four minutes left, okay? So let me say a few words about a subtle point, which I did not mention. So in a short example, we say in the picture, we are saying that each node is processing only the transactions its own shot. So clearly the compute and storage is order one. The communication, however, is not very clear because you have many, many blocks, but if you don't observe, if you don't check whether other blocks actually exist, then you may have data availability problem. So it turns out to solve the data availability problem, you have to be able to efficiently check whether all the other blocks, the other blocks in the order of shots actually exist, actually exist. Because if you don't, if you, if you accept it, then you may be under a data available attack. And so to be communication efficient, that means that a node in a shard do, should not need to download all the transaction blocks across the entire network. That would be too much. On the other hand, what you can do is you can do sampling, okay? And this is not our idea. This idea already in a recent paper last year focusing more on light client, and we can apply similar ideas here to get efficient sampling and check for data availability. The contribution we have is a basic efficient coding fraud proof, which we call Coded Miracle Tree, which we put up in the paper, a project put up in the paper recently. So you can take a look. But this is an essential technology for achieving efficient communication scaling. Okay. All right, so now that I have two more minutes left, let me say a few words on how our solution contrasts with a classic approach to sharding. So classic approach to sharding basically does the following, okay? It, using some randomness generation process, it randomly assigns nodes to shots. So this is shot one, shot two, and shot three. Okay? And each shot is now processing its own transactions. So this is how I achieve parallel processing. And the assignment is random to essentially make it more difficult for the adversary to attack it. And to make it even more difficult, you typically have to rotate the shot. Otherwise, you have a problem. So you have rotation. Okay? And the problem with this approach is that if your adversary is adaptive at a rate faster than you can rotate, then it can figure out that, oh, okay, these nodes are managing shot one. Then it can go and attack these nodes. And then again, your security is no longer the size of the network, but only the size of a shot, which is bad. Second, engineering-wise, is a difficult problem because now you have to manage all the shuffling of shards. And our solution basically avoids all that. So in summary, our solution is the following. Instead of trying to assign different nodes to do completely different blockchain, we have two structure. First, we decouple security from transaction processing, and the security is maintained by everybody, whereas the processing is independent across shards. So the two extreme is full replication and independent blockchain. 
And what we, our solution is that we can actually get the best of both worlds. Because in, for security, we have full replication, but for transaction processing, we have independence across shop. So that's why we can win best of both worlds. OK, so this is the team that did this work. Okay. And if you want to find out more about a project, about this particular work or other piece of work, you can go to a website, trifactorchain.com. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually still confused on the same point. I, under, I understood the part of your answer that the redundancy of the notes on the right are purely about message ordering, not about computation. Correct. Uh, so that, that makes sense. But now the, computation, the, the systems you're comparing with are doing redundant validation of the computation so that as a client, I don't have to do my independent verification of the computation. I can, the computation is credible because it's been so, so redundant. From yes, that's right. Uh, over here, where is the redundant checking that the computation is at? The checking is done within the shot, right? It could be redundant, but across the nodes in the shot. So every node in the, sh in the shot will do the re checking. OK, so the security with regard to the validity of the computation as opposed to the ordering is only as redundant as the number of nodes in the shard. Uh, so in terms of validity, there's no notion of security. So the security okay. here we refers to is the ordering of the blocks. Okay. So the ordering is fully agreed upon by everybody in the whole network. Okay. okay. Checking validity, given that ordering, is done within the shard. But we can maybe take it offline because Dan is eager to get me yeah. off the stage here. Well,